Now we'd like to look at some more advanced analysis tools. In this case, we're looking at a county that's ramping up for flu season. They annually put out flu, uh, flu shot clinics so that the citizens can come and get immunized against the flu. Now this county has eight physical health clinics, and they're all kind of clustered around the middle of the county for the most part. So last year, they were able to get funding to actually put out eight additional mobile clinics, and they were able to just kind of place them around the county to get out where they thought there was most population. But this year, they weren't as able to get as much funding, so they can only put out four additional mobile health clinics. So they know that they need to be a little smarter this year about where they put these clinics. They want to actually make some data-driven, fact-based decisions about where to place these so that it could, they know they'll be reaching the most of the population possible. So we're going to take a look at using ArcGIS for desktop, ArcGIS online, and data and maps for ArcGIS to help solve this problem. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Tim. So as Tim mentioned, what we want to do is find the most optimal place to place mobile health clinics. Well, before we can understand where to place those mobile ones, we're going to have to understand where our current ones are located. So let's go ahead and figure out that. What we're looking at is Muckleburg County down there in Charlotte. And I have some data that will help us with this analysis. So the first piece of information that I have are the actual health clinics. These are the brick and mortar clinics that are already there. They're not mobile. So we'll need this for our analysis. The second piece of information that we'll need is population information. And what we're looking at here is data symbolized at a block group level based upon population. So the larger the circle, the more people in that particular area. Now that we have those two pieces, the last piece to solve this puzzle is a street network because we really want to see the drive times to get to each one of these locations. So what I have is actually a street network data set. Now, how many of you manage and maintain street networks? Okay, for those of you who do, you can use yours. But for those of you who don't manage a street network, you can actually use the one that Esri provides. So Esri provides a street, uh, Esri provides a free uh, street network that you can use for routing purposes. And that's what I'm using in this example. So for some clarity reasons, I'll go ahead and just turn off the street. So the tools that we're going to be using to solve this problem are tools that are available in the Network Analyst Extension. Specifically, they're the location allocation tools. Those tools are going to allow us to understand what areas these health clinics cover. So let's go ahead and start by opening up the Network Analyst window. The next thing we want to do is actually load some data into the Network Analysis window. To do that, we're going to use our location allocation information. And the facilities that we're going to be doing this analysis on are healthcare facilities. So I'll simply right click and load our locations into here. So we're going to load our health clinics. These are not candidates. These are required locations because, again, they're brick and mortar. And we'll accept the defaults. The next thing we need to load in is our demand points. In this instance, it's the population centers. Those are the people we want to serve. So um, select the population points. And we'll go ahead and load that directly into our analysis. Let me go ahead and clean this up a little so that we can see what's going on. I'm also going, for cartographic reasons only, apply a layer file to my symbology. And this is only so we can see things more clearly as I go through this example. OK, so we have our health clinics that are the brick and mortar. They don't move. And we have our population points. So the next thing I need to do is to configure some advanced properties. So on this network analysis window, I can look at the properties. The first thing that I want to set is some of the analysis settings. In this instance, we're going to go from the demand to the facility. Just like the very first demo, people are going from their houses towards the healthcare facilities. The next thing we want to know is what type of analysis do we want to run? 
Well, there are many different types, but for this one, we want to maximize the coverage because we want to maximize the amount of people that have access to this particular clinic or these particular clinics. We're going to move this up, number up to eight because that's how many clinics we have. And the impedance cutoff is simply a drive time. So I'm going to use a drive time of about 15 minutes because I believe that's how far people will drive to get a health or a flu shot. Hit OK. And then we'll simply just solve this analysis. So what this location allocation tool is doing is it's looking at every one of these health clinics, figuring out which population center it services, and the results are here on the map. So those green lines point to each of the locations that can go to the health flu clinics right now. What's interesting, we're servicing about 400 of these population centers, but we have about 556 of them. So that's a percentage of what, Tim? That's uh, about 72%. Okay, so we have about 72% coverage uh, for the entire county right now. I think we can do better. And I know we can do better because we have four mobile clinics that we get to add to this analysis. So one of the things about these mobile clinics is last year they were placed in libraries and they've been placed there many times before. So we want to continue to use those because the people are familiar with that. So what I have are the libraries that are available in this entire county and they're represented by the nice little symbol there. The hard part is which four do you choose? So just guessing, I'm going to say the four up the north side of the county. But then we'll be excluding a lot of this population down here at the bottom. So let's use spatial analysis to help answer this question instead of Harry's best guess. So all I'm going to do is load in these libraries directly to the facilities. These are candidates because I want to choose uh, four of them. So I'll just keep that there. And the next thing I want to do is go back into the properties and I want to choose a total of 12 facilities, which means my eight brick and mortar and then four of those libraries. We'll go ahead and hit OK and we'll just resolve this analysis. So the software is going to pick the best four libraries to pick based upon the coverage. For symbology reasons, I'll turn off my libraries and there we go. So there are the four libraries that we should pick the ones with the big green check marks. So this is great. We've used some spatial analysis to help us determine where to put these mobile clinics. You may want to go further and begin to look at healthcare coverage, the um, age of the population to fine tune this even more. But for today, we'll stop here. All this information resides on my laptop. Once again, it's great information, it's powerful, but it's on my laptop. What we want to do is to share this out with the entire public. To do that, I'm going to go to the file, share as menu, and I'm going to share as a service, and I'll go publish a service just like you've seen me done, do many times today. I've already done that, and here are the results. So I've gone ahead and symbolized the map, and I've changed the base map to look a bit more attractive. I've configured the pop-ups on each one of these locations to have the address of where these flu clinics are at. I want to share this with the public. To do that, I simply click the share button, I check everyone, and I really wish everybody went to ArcGIS Online every day to find these maps, but the reality is they don't. They go to the county's website where those maps and, and, and information are generally there. So I want to embed this map directly to the website for the county. I want to allow the citizens to search on their location, and I also want to add a legend to the map so that they understand what each, of these rep each one of these buildings represents. So what ArcGIS Online does is it automatically creates this iframe. It's a code, some HTML code that will allow me to put a map directly in a website. All I have to do is simply copy this. I'll go to Mecklenburg County's website, and under their free and low-cost clinics, they actually have a map out there right now, but guess what? It's in a PDF, which may have problems opening up on all devices. So instead, I'm going to use a little developer trick here where I am going to embed my map directly inside of the website by just simply copying and pasting that small snippet of code. And there we go. Now we have this interactive map where people can search for their address. If they're not sure what those points mean, you can see that they're health clinics. And 
you can interactively pan and zoom into this map to see more and more details. So what I showed here was using location allocation analytical tools in the network analyst toolbar to really help make a better decision on where to place mobile health clinics so that you can cover the most amount of the population with the fewest mobile clinics. I also used some data sets that were provided freely from Esri, which was that street network data set. So if you don't have one, that's okay. You can always go and use that. And finally, let's be real about where people go to find information. In this example, it's going to be the public website. So let's put this map and this information in that website. I Tim? think that's a key point, Harry. <clears throat> put your maps and information where people are gonna expect to find them. People are gonna want to go or expect to go to a health page to find health information. They're gonna expect to go to a parks page to find information about parks. So put those maps and applications where you know the public is, is gonna go and be able to find them and use them quickly. Now the data that Harry discussed using the network data set is available as, uh, through the customer care portal. It's actually a download you can get right from your customer care portal by logging in there. 